All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Yes, sir. Back again. Keep coming up with these good interviews. Keep coming up with these interesting truck drivers that's driving these mean streaks out here. I am so appreciative that they come on to the podcast and share their experience, their life, their 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 their, their grind, their hustles. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what I do on Lockout Man Podcast. I bring it to you guys so that you guys can be entertained, be educated. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. This young lady, I was on Shape Worlds live feed one night, and she had an interview with this young lady. And I was like, huh? Let me see what she's all about. Let's see what she's all about. So, what I am going to do, today's special guest coming to the stage is Miss Crown Shug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, first thing first, before, before I get into anything, I, I got to know. I got to know. I got to know. Where where this name come from? Crown Shug. Where where did that name come from? How did you come up with that name? Well, my favorite drink is Crown Apple. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I took Crown from that. And then Shug, I took it from Shug Knight, first name, Shug, you know, um, I just like I just like Suge Knight. I really do. Is, <laughs> is his name Suge Knight for real? You know his name. His full name is Marion Suge Knight. But I can understand. I can understand Suge Knight because try to run a, 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 a empire such as Death Row with the first name of Marion. Yeah, that that's that that probably <laughs> might not show no 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 fear to nobody. Like, hey, Marion. He was straight and raw. Yeah. You know, he was raw. He was, yeah, I like, I like, I like the night. I don't care. I, I, I mean. With his name being Suge, he could, you know, he got that little, that little fierce, that little, that little rawness. But again, trying to run a company with, 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 with your name being, with people calling you Marion. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's gonna kind of that blow over. That's, that, no. <laughs> that don't blow over. They'd be like, "Up, uh, Marion." Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't think no. The energy, the energy wasn't there. That's not good energy. It's just, it's just too, I don't know, soft. I guess. No. <laughs> so Suge, big guy, you know. So Suge, so you you went over here and took Suge and ran with it, huh? I did. Well, let I did. well, cry. I like his energy. Well, Crown Shug, let everybody know who you are. Introduce yourself. Well, basically, um, like I said, I'm Crown Shug. I've been driving for about five years. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. A solo driver currently. I am hauling Hazmat with KLOM. And their sister company is called EcoShield. So if you see EcoShield out over the road that we're associated with KLLM, and basically, I'm a lease purchase driver. Um, my goal is to become an owner operator. I do want to expand my company, which is RKLS Express Incorporated, which will be later changed to Ben Booker Group because I plan on doing other ventures outside of trucking. And um, so I'm just out here just working day by day, trying to get things together. And that's it. You just vlogging on. YouTube, you, you basically you sound like a you sound like a trucker with a goal man i'm 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 liking that so let's rewind because you, you got to have some goals let's rewind let's rewind man because you 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 poured the drink so damn fast that i couldn't even keep up you know what i'm saying so let's start at the be <laughs> let's start at the beginning so you uh michigan born born and raised born and raised detroit michigan what was yes. what was life like for young suge up in uh, Detroit, Michigan. You know, I I appreciate Detroit. You know, growing up, I saw a lot of things. I wasn't, you know, I, I went to private school all my life. You know, my mom was trying to shelter me from the world in a way. But at the same time, she, I was able to ex 
experience a lot because, um, you know, when I was six years old, my mom and I, we got robbed, gunpoint, wow. gun to our head, Ooh. like straight up. They wanted her purse. The guy, he was like, shoot her, shoot her. You know, he was what? talking to his uh, partner, you know. He was talking to my the partner that was holding the gun to my mom's head, mm-hmm. okay. And I was spazzing out. I was in the back seat. She was in the front seat. And I was just like, don't shoot my mama, don't shoot my mama. And I guess the guy, you know, you know, he had more sense than his partner, thank God, because he was like, no, nah, man, I can't do that, you know. And so his partner reached over my mom's lap, got, grabbed her purse, and then they just ran off. And um, that, that experience woke me up. And then my mom would always say, you know, it's not a good idea to do drugs, you know. So what she'll do is she'll take me around to the neighborhood where, you know, it was a really bad crack epidemic at that time, you mm-hmm. know. And I would just see people wilding out in the middle of the street, uh, running out naked, running around just, you know, it's like Zombieville, you know, at that point. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy, you know. So it really taught me street smart at that point, you know, uh, always watching your environment and looking around and everything. But there was some great things happening in Detroit because, you know, you had the automotive industry um, popping off. So people were doing well. It's just that they Detroit was also fighting a drug epidemic. So you had the good parts and you had the bad parts, just like any city, you have the good sides and the bad sides or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my mom was like, I don't care what you do. You're going to go to college. You're going to get out of here. You know, you're going to do well. Like my mom did very well in her career. She was a community organizer, um, working with the community foundations, working with the churches. Um, We did paint the town where we sectioned off different, uh, communities in Detroit, and we would paint their houses for free. Mm-hmm. I would volunteer for that. And um, my dad, he was a lawyer, um, and he he did his thing um, in Michigan, Texas, and California. My my family on my mother's side owned a plumbing and heating company called Ben Washington Ben Washington and Sons which is currently running at this time. We are the longest running African-American plumbing and heating company out of Detroit, Michigan. We did the African-American Museum. We did plumbing on Washington Street. Mm -hmm. Um, Mainly most of the plumbing in Detroit, including houses, was done through Ben Washington and Sons. So I learned my entrepreneur skills through my grandfather, and um, I watched how he did business. My grandmother did business. And I watched how they build uh, their empire. And I don't want to do plumbing. You know, that's a little bit too dirty for me. But just by watching them, you know, I was able to um, see how they started from the ground up. You know, so. Okay, that's what's that's up. That's my life in Detroit, basically. Okay, that's what's up. That's a lot. That that's a lot. That, that's a lot. Got to give you a yeah. got to give you a round of applause for that. So you coming? Well, you. So you coming up from uh coming up from there? That that pretty much gave you the strength of you you having both of your parents in your life, and it gives you the strength to to carry that into trucking where you at now, right? Yes, all like everyone in my family is pretty much ambitious. You know, if you tell us no, we're going to say, okay, well, we're going to figure out how we can make that a yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, even going um, to college, I went to Alabama State University, and they used to uh, say, oh, no, this class is full, is full. You can't get into it, right? It was like a couple of classes, and every time they would tell me to do that, like, oh, you got to wait till the next semester to take this course. I would go to the class anyway. Even though my name wasn't on the roster, I would sit on the floor in the back of the classroom and still 
take notes as though I am registered in that class and I will go to my teacher's office every morning and meet them and say, hey, good morning. How you doing? It? I got on their nerves so much. They're like, listen, we'll sign you into the class. Lord, you're getting on my nerves. I'm like, yeah, I know. Okay. So I turned a no into a yes. That's what's up, so man. learning that's, persistence that, is the key. That's what's up, know? being persistent. Let's back up a little bit because I want to I want to talk about your the, the trauma with uh, – with that incident with your moms, because you know that happened. To, that happened to my moms a couple of years ago. Somebody ran up on her with a uh-huh. with a gun. And how did that? How how did that? How did that make you feel? Or how did that affect your mother? Uh, being in a situation like that, and more so, how did that affect you by seeing it? You know. Well. My mom is such, she's just so strong. You know, she wouldn't let me, because I was six years old at the time, so she wouldn't let me see her, you know, break down and cry or anything like that. She was like one of those types of mothers. Like, she was just like, we just going to keep going, moving forward, you know. Um, and me personally, that it just woke me up. Like, the world is not Walt Disney um, and Nick. Nickelodeon or anything like that. The world is real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can die at any moment. You can something can happen to you. So I I just woke up and I became conscious for real for real at six because I was like, okay, um, everybody is not Walt Disney out here. This is people out here that want to hurt you and stuff like that. So I didn't realize that I learned any grief smart or any skills on how to navigate through the streets until I moved down south and then I felt like dang you know it was just so relaxing to to live in a community where everybody knew each other um I didn't have to worry about crime every time a door slammed outside I didn't have to jump up and see if somebody was still in the car or anything you know, uh, 4th of July and New Year's, um, we used to lay on the floor and watch TV, you know, because there was so many gunshots going on. So mm-hmm. when I got down south, I was like, it is so quiet down here. <laughs> <laughs> everybody is so nice because, you know, Detroit, you know, it's everybody at that time in the 90s, um, you know, you stare at somebody too long. It was like that's that's signaling for you know you ready to fight or something like that because why are you looking at me and stuff mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. so you know <laughs> um, when I got down south you know people would stare at me but it, it was mainly they were trying to figure out if they knew you or you know where are you from that type of thing and my friends had to explain that to me like they're not trying to fight you girl they they're just trying to you know get to know you they're just trying to figure out who you are i'm like oh okay yeah, you're like no know, man no nah, man why why they why why, why they mean mugging me like what, what the hell man okay like what's going on like, what, 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 the, from, what they so, what they so. what why they mean mugging me now why you know i gotta let i, I gotta let them know like yo don't don't look at me like that don't look at me like okay. that. Uh-uh. No, nah, no. Nah. You, you I look, didn't you, realize I was you looking at you, high alert. You, you, you know? looking at you looking at me. You looking at me too damn hard, bro. You looking at me too damn. <laughs> what you trying? What, what you trying to do? Holler at me or something like that? What? What the hell, man? <laughs> what the hell? All right, all right. So that's uh. So that pretty much uh. So that pretty much changed you. So from 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 Detroit, Michigan to where? So you stay down in Houston now? You stay down in Texas? Oh, well, um, basically, I live out of my club, okay? Okay, okay. That's what I do. I don't have an apartment. I don't have a house or anything like that. It's pointless at this time because all of my energy, all of my money needs to go into this company because my company is like a baby right now, you know? It's, it's getting my full attention. Um, the baby And is... being that I don't have any the baby do yeah, you do you do you have a baby do you have any kids no oh, okay so no. so right no. so right now you just concentrating on getting uh on getting your company together which is cool which is real good yeah all right so uh so let's back up a little um 
So how you say five years of of trucking? Where where did you get your start at? Where what school you went to to get your license, or did you go to a trucking school? I went to Roadmaster, Roadmaster. in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, whoa, okay. Did you did was you there when they had that modified truck? Because I did a call to Roadmasters. Uh, I think that video is up. I'm not sure. Yeah, that video should be up. I did a call to Roadmasters that they had a modified truck for uh for handicapped students. Was you there when 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 uh when when handicapped students in a wheelchair was was learning to drive trucks? Um, no, I was there when they had all the broke down trucks. <laughs> we was <laughs> we was straight the hood over. Now I know they upgraded the um the school because. I did go back to visit, I think, 2018, and um, Warner straight took it over. Yeah, Warner, and yeah, Warner they took have, it over. Yeah, and it's nice now. They got new computers, cla- uh, classroom and setup, and everything, and um, they have new trucks out there. So, okay, yeah, they're doing big things at the Roadmasters in Jackson now but when i went we was all sitting on top of each other seemed like we was cramped into a classroom <laughs> you know um fighting over three trucks you know so. okay 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 so what's the um so what's the uh so after coming out of after coming out of school what, what company you decided to go with and why i went with covenant um, we had a choice between Covenant, Warner, and I. Oh, and um, Stephen Transport. And I was so nervous coming out of truck driving school. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are. Um, and I said, I, I prefer the team thing. I thought that was a good idea. I was going to do the teaming thing uh, just so that I'm with somebody while I'm driving in my first year and I'm not out here by myself. I can kind of learn the ropes a little bit while somebody's in the truck with me. Um, if I have any backing issues, I have somebody that can spot me and watch my back and everything like that. So, so that's why I chose Covenant. So Covenant was, uh, so I, I spoken to Covenant and I actually know a couple of people that actually went, uh, went through Covenant. Did, did you at the time you was with Covenant? Was you training with? Was you solo training or was you team training with uh with another driver and the trainer at the same time? Oh no, it was just me and the trainer. Oh, okay, because you know back then Covenant. Well, I'm not sure if they doing it now, but from what I heard. Uh, back then that they was team training you know there would be two it would be two people in yes. the truck and it would be the trainer as well so it would be actually three people I in the truck I don't know how they did that now, that I, don't, I don't know how I they don't even know how I don't know how it's done either but the you know the friend of mine that that went through covenant uh she pretty much survived it but I had to call her up and talk to her and ask her what was her her experience there again but uh but yeah, so solo. So how? So how was the experience with the uh, with the with the trainer? Was it a male trainer or a female trainer? Or can you remember? Um, it was a male trainer. Male trainer. Um, his name is Peter. We're friends to this day. Great trainer. Just awesome. Um, very professional. And a lot of things that he taught me back then, I still use to this day. Okay. Um, all right. He pretty much broke everything down to me, and you know he's out of Chicago, and uh, so we kind of had that experience in common, that city life experience in common. So, um, yeah, he was awesome. It was just when I got away from him, that's when I ran into the issues at Covenant. All right, so obviously you didn't stay with Covenant too long. So fast forward. Fast forward a couple of years later, you here at KLLM. What uh, what's what what about what what's what's up with KLLM? Because you was in you was in uh, you was in Shape World's uh live feed, and you was just 
all over KLLM. I mean, you, 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 you had nothing. You had nothing bad to say about KLLM. What, what's your experience with them? Okay, so you have people that you know they're going to have their issues with starter company. I consider KLM a starter company because they do have a school. They do train people to become truck drivers. After you complete their schooling, they'll put you out on the road with a trainer, and then you move forward to your own truck, okay? And you have to understand, you have to pay your dues when you're in trucking, especially your first year, okay? KLM is a reefer company, so you're going to go to those cold storages and things of that nature. Um, You're going to learn how dispatchers um, night shift and day shift operate, and you're going to travel over the road. Now, they do have southeastern freight, and they do have people that run northeast, but... um, Basically, I think KLLM is the most down-to-earth company that I've been with. As soon as I called the recruiter, she was calling me every day, making sure I was okay, and she was really down-to-earth. She told me the truth. And to this day, nothing that KLM has told me has been a lie. Even when you go to their website, www.kllm.com, Everything that you see there, that's exactly what you'll get. Now, I did not run with KLLM on the company side. I started with KLM on the lease purchase side. What was the okay? reason? What was the so, reason why you got in the lease with uh, KLLM? Well, first I was going to go with Prime, but I was with a company before. They wanted me to be with that company for about eight months and I was like no (laughs) so I chose KLM actually um I got talked into being a lease purchase driver because I wanted to be an owner operator but I didn't know how to segue into it and plus um I didn't have any money to put down on the truck or anything so I like KLM setup because when you come into the lease purchase program you have the option to walk away and that was what sold me, really, is like, if this thing doesn't work out, I can turn the truck back in. There's no penalty to me on my record or anything like that financially. And I could just go back to being a company driver. So that was a plus for me. And I said, you know what, either way it goes, I'm going to be driving, whether I'm driving locally, regionally, or over the road. I'm going to be driving. So I might as well drive towards owning my own truck. Okay. That's that's what got me into lease purchase. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So you got got the goals. And as you said before, you know, as you said before, you got to put the, you got to pay your dues. You know, trucking, you're not just going to get, you're not just going to get into it and just think it's going to be that easy you know a lot of people gets into this game thinking that and that's where that's that's where the turmoil and the problems come in with uh with with trucking because you know they they might not know the ends they might not know the outs the the intricacies and stuff like that you know what i'm saying and it's a good thing that you took the time within the five years to figure to figure all that out to get to where you at right now so in this industry though in this industry being a female trucker how how has it how has it been for you well you know for you in this male dominated industry how do you how do you think the male drivers see you personally as as a driver out here you know what i have to speak very positively about the guys out here on the road in my experience. Now, I know there's some women out that have been driving that has had an experience um, with sexual harassment. I've had sexual harassment only one time, an issue with sexual harassment, and that was with Covenant. But as far as being out here over the road, going to the truck stops and things of that nature, I haven't had anyone out here disrespect 
respect me um, or pretty much, you know, um, try me in a way as far as sexual harassing me. Now, on the other end, um, there are some guys that I have ran into that felt like <laughs> women shouldn't be out here. You know, um, they will um, act like I can't back a truck into a dock or, you know, they'll, they'll try to uh, challenge me in a way. And to me, that that's fun to me. You know, I, I, I make it a game, but um, I haven't had to feel like my safety was um, jeopardized out here because I feel like they look out, everybody looks out for one another. Some people might have a different experience, but I always say, you know, it's all about how you present yourself. Mm-hmm. I don't come um, and get out the truck with Daisy Duke on. I don't, <laughs> um, and even though that should not, don't get me wrong, that should not even um, be the permission for somebody to harass a woman. I just don't want to give any inkling that I'm out here other than trucking. You know, I, I dress professionally. Um, if I'm going to a shipper or a receiver, I make sure I'm dressed professionally. If I'm going to the terminal, I make sure I dress professionally because I don't know if I'm going to run into the CEO or not or if they want to call me in for a meeting for an opportunity for something that pays a little better. You just never know. So okay. um, on my days where I'm just driving in between, the shippers and receivers, yeah, I will dress, you know, a little bit more relaxed and everything like that. But I always try to make sure that I represent KLM professionally and I also represent my own company professionally. What, what about um, what about some of the... What, that's what, important. But what about... Let me ask you this. What, let me ask you this. When, when you see... What would be going through your mind when you actually see female drivers that do dress provocatively and 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 you know show more than what they supposed to show uh in this trucking industry honestly i just i kind of cringe a little bit i don't judge but i kind of you know i personally try to watch them walk across the park line just making sure nobody you know will you know, run up on them or anything. That's that I would think that guys would do that, but you never know because you got local people that drive to the truck stop to get gas, you know, four wheelers and everybody, you know what I'm saying? So you just never know. I just try to watch their back. Um, but I kind of cringe a little bit because it's like, you just never know what's going on in some of these guys' minds. You know, they've been out on the road for two, three months sometimes at a time. They Their hormones might be raising a little bit. They see somebody walking across the parking lot, you know, uh, looking pr- provocative or whatnot. They might think that the, uh, there's a lot lizard or whatever. I don't know. But um, I kind of cringe a little bit because it's like, it's all about your safety, okay. you know. What, and, um, what advice? What what advice, if if any, would you have for for females that does that? You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You're beautiful. You're beautiful without having to show your body. I know that you know. Sometimes you be out here. And you feel like you lose yourself a little bit, you know, as far as being feminine. Um, You know, you want to kind of be free a little bit and and feel sexy and everything like that. But there's a time and place for everything, you know. And um, just know that you you are gorgeous. You know, you can get you a nice pair of shorts with a cute top. Um... And some sandals, if you want to wear sandals when it's really hot or some really cute gym shoes or whatever. Get your nails done. You know, get your hair done. Put your makeup on, your eyelashes. That's fine, you know. But you don't have to show your body to feel 
special or to feel feminine or anything like you don't have to do that because um when i see that i'll be like she's just such a beautiful woman she doesn't really have to you know show her body off like that you know but it is her choice to do that it is her choice to do that i'm not here to judge anybody i just think about the safety aspect of it more than anything you know, else um what she chooses to wear you know but other than that i feel like everybody has the freedom to wear what they want to wear um and i feel like all of the women that i've seen out here they they um i admire them they are um very ambitious and they're um trying to achieve their goals just like i am right. you know so i just I just pray for their safety. That's it. All right. you know, I just don't want them to get hurt. All right. you know? That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, uh, should, man. Should. Crown should. <laughs> Damn. Yes. Damn. What's up? Yes. I like that. Love the name, man. All right. So crown should, man. So what um so your 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 end goal is is to not only do this trucking thing, but you said you got uh, other things in the works. You want you you care to elaborate a little bit before we get up out of here on what what else you got in the works? Um. Uh, well, basically, I want to work on getting um my real estate business popping off. Um. I wouldn't mind um, getting a diesel mechanic shop started, okay? And those are the two things, and also a laundromat. That's what I want to do. Those are the three things, matter of fact. Okay. I want to do under Ben Booker Group. Okay. Now when? So, now now uh, when? When is now when is all now you yeah you just said it's going to take time. So when? What's the goal date? to at least one of them. I'm, I'm thinking the diesel mechanic. So what's the goal date for a diesel mechanic? This is 2020 Corona season. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, not, not that. Speaking of which, ha, has, has Corona season affected KLLM where we, on, on your side of things? No, I haven't heard anyone, um, speak about, um, the lack of load. Um, we did go down drastically in our fuel surcharge, but I think that's the only thing that really um, messed us up for a little while. You know, some of the uh, picking plants um, shut down for a little while, but KLM was able to find freight elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the KLLM side of things, the cold store side, but. Um, the hazmat side, we slowed down just a little bit, but the great part about our division is that we have a guaranteed pay of twenty five hundred dollars a week, whether we run whether we run twenty five hundred miles or not. So mm -hmm. that to me, I think that saved us a lot. <laughs> but um, once the auto plants opened up again and everything, we just started rolling, rolling, rolling again. So. Now you you um, got all your you, you, you no, got I don't think you you got all your endorsements right. I have hazmat and tanker. All right, that's about it. So let me ask you this: Well, hazmat, right quick before uh, before anything else, your hazmat. Do you have to do you have to recertify at a certain time with hazmat? I heard you have to. Yes, you do have to recertify. Um, right for me. I have a Florida driver's license, and the time is up August of this year. So I was thinking about um, getting a Michigan driver's license since I go home a lot. Um, it's just easier for me to get to Michigan instead of Florida. So, um, yeah, I'll have to retest. They have to make sure that um, everything is that I still remember everything. Is it the same test? And, um, is, is it the same test that we go in to test for to, to get it initially? Yes. Well, in Michigan, it's like the same the same test. So you just take about I think it's like twenty five questions. Yeah, and you got to get like four. Like, like you got to get like ten. You you can only get 
nine or eight wrong or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I try not to get any wrong, yeah, I, but yeah, I don't. I think when I first took the test, I only got one wrong. Yeah, I got and, my um, I got my tankers. I was thinking about getting my hazmat, but everybody keep telling me, "Well, you, you know, should. you know, you gotta uh, you gotta retest and all like that." I was like, "Oh man, I ain't gonna go through all that." And then I gotta I gotta pay deal. I gotta pay like another hundred dollars and all like that, and I don't wanna go through all of that. But anyway. But you have to, you know, I don't know about any other state, but you have to realize when you handle hats, that you learn a lot. So you probably won't have to study as hard, but I always go and review and brush up and everything. But a lot of stuff will just come to you like, yeah, I know this. Yeah, yeah, you got to put the placards on this side and then, right, you know, right. so it's just basic questions. Oh, okay. Stuff, so I think you should take the test. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know what? I, you, you know what? Since you since you say so, I I I I'll, I'll go ahead and put it in consideration. <laughs> since you say so, since you say so, well, Crown should yeah, give you better opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Crown should thank you for coming on and sharing your experience with me and all like that, chopping it up for thank the little you. time. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for. For everybody that's uh, that that could look for you, and I, I usually promote Instagram and not Facebook, but you can promote all that you want on here. What's what's what, who are you on uh, on Instagram? I am crown underscore on, on Instagram. Hold on. Let's see, crown underscore. Underscore. Let me see. Do I see you? See you? No. Let's see if I put the rest of it in. No. Uh, do I see you? See you? Let me see. What? No. Still don't see you. Still don't see you. Ah, there you go. I have Wait. To, I have to change my name. On here. Uh, just hang tight on that. Uh, just hang tight on that, you all. I'm gonna change the name on that. Oh. Uh, okay. So <laughs> this ain't. Oh. Okay. This. Well, I got. I, yeah, because if they go to my other Instagram, they're not. It's gonna. My name is gonna change on that. I'm under construction with um, Crown. So it's gonna be Crown underscore to on Instagram, and I'll have that up today. Yes. But mainly, if you want to get in contact with me, I am on YouTube at Crown Sugar. Okay, Crown Sugar on YouTube. There you go. There. Whoops. Yeah. Wait a minute. There you go. Crown Sug on YouTube. Here it is. Nice little, nice, yeah. nice little page. You got a number of videos on here. What's this? Uh, what's this? Uh, one right here. Truck stop daddies. Oh, are you looking? Oh yeah. I love my truck stop daddy. You, you looking for a daddy? You look you looking for a truck stop daddy? I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for a daddy, y'all. Uh. Nah, man, we can't. Nah, nah. See, ain't no more, ain't no more daddies out here, man. Ain't no more, ain't no more daddies out here. I, I'm gonna start something uh, here. Ain't no more daddies. Here, ain't no more daddies man. out here. Man. Nah, ain't no daddies. <laughs> Woo. You, 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 you driving the truck? What the hell are you looking for a daddy for? You, you already making money, making bank. Got your, uh, got your goals and everything. You still looking I for need a, a daddy? You looking for a sh- I need a sugar nah, daddy. Yes. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we, we, we can't. I, we we don't have we don't have no money for you. Yeah, we'll I I could I, I I could be a broke daddy. How's that? Is is that good? <laughs> broke daddy? Is that good for you? I mean, no broke daddy. No broke. No broke daddy. What? A bro, ladies, a bro daddy ladies, is no bro daddy a bro, a bro daddy is Don't just a bro daddy is just as good as a sugar daddy. He just broke. No, no, ain't got no money. Ain't got no money. It's, but you making your own money, though. You you making so why? It don't matter. Why are you worried? Okay, why? Well, let me ask you this: Why you why are you worried? Right, money, right, eh? right, right. They, my money is my uh-huh. money, and your money is my no, money. No, 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 we can't we can't do that. Listen, no, my money can't. Listen, my I money can't, can't be your money. So if I okay, so if if I need hey. if I need some cheese, if I need some cheese out here, can can I call you up and say? It can, oh, see, I, I I can't ask you for no. You better hunt like the man. You better hunt. Y'all men know how to hunt, right? No, nah, I don't know how to hunt. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you do. 
<laughs> oh man! I did stuff, yeah, I did stuff, yeah. Oh man! Yeah, before everybody be like, "Oh, she a gold digger." Yeah. Listen, I'm just oh, joking. Just love. Saying, yeah, yeah. Get it right now. No, no gold digging over here, man. No okay, gold here, here they here. go. Here yeah, they go. No, no gold digging over here, man. What I the- have all hate comments in my YouTube. Like, well, thank you, Crown. I hate you. Like, no. Thank you, Crown, again for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Um, you guys could look for her on uh, on YouTube under Crown Shook. And you guys could, and if you guys want to come on and promote whatever or chop it up with me, you can just hit me up at LockoutMen Podcast at gmail.com. Just get at me. Or you can go over to Instagram and hit, hit me over there at Lockout Men. Or as always, hit me in the comments at the comments below. Well, that is it for my uh my guest today, Crown Shook. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more comment, for more comment, for more contents like this don't forget to hit that all button too because you get everything when i drop i am your humble host lockout men and thank you to my guest should i mean crown should because she likes the name and on that note we are gone